Alhamdulillahi allazi laysa shay'un a'zama minhu wa bi kalimati Allahi tamati allati la yujawizuhunna barrun wa la fajir wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd With all that has been mentioned thus far it should be sufficiently understood why Allah has made forbidden through his messenger to undertake any religious journey except to the three most sacred masajid the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam declares la tushaddu rihal illa ila thalathati masajid al masjid al haram wa masjid ar rasul wa masjid al aqsa do not embark upon a journey except to the three masajid the masjid of the kaaba in makkah the masjid of the messenger in medina and masjid al aqsa in jerusalem unfortunately even seemingly practicing able muslims never consider such journeys instead it's always about their dream vacation where the fantasy usually begins with the most wild places on earth with cool white caldera views perfect weather and amazing sunsets great beaches and interesting boat cruises grand hotels with delectable food and majestic spas this is basically what people fancy to suit their holiday style and even more to be pampered with after being completely worn out from working day in and day out to the usual grind In fact, in the modern world today, the tourism industry feeds off an insatiable hunger for us to travel further and more. In recent times, there has been great demand to undergo vocational trips from a surge of mass tourism. Nearly everyone is dreaming to go nearly everywhere, resulting in a tidal wave of visitors to some of the most famous degrading and frenzy destination in the world. Conscious Muslims usually go to places that are blessed. They see no reason for anyone to go to places that are cursed or surrounded by sins and transgressions. Repeatedly, scholars of the highest religious authority issue rulings based on scriptural evidence against visiting places in which Muslims have been warned to avoid due to open display of rebelliousness against the laws of Islam or rejoicing in shameful activities. Regrettably, despite this warning, nothing of it seems to bother many Muslim ones they make up their mind to head out for their own kind of amusement. We have tons of books and lectures specifically on the importance of Hajj and Umrah, and in spite of the fact that believers every year share their joyful experience from these divine trips, a great deal of Muslims just don't have a desire to experience that real ecstasy. But then again, how can they appreciate the importance of something that they have never been dreaming of? And though they have already gotten their fair share of terrifying experiences in different parts of the planet, there are still places just waiting for these morbidly inclined travelers to go visit. Though Hajj has been declared an obligation upon those who can physically and financially afford it, entitled Muslims never stop to defend their decision of flinching at the mere thought of fulfilling their religious obligation. They make the negative ramifications of unchecked and irresponsible traveling look so real. And though they have spent years exploring the shores of the planet, they never get tired of being wrapped up in a rather so-called splendid package that comes with a fresh boarding pass to leap abroad into some more daring destinations on the other side of the world. Some may be ready to argue that the Quran encourages us to travel as traveling has the potential to broaden the mind and offers us new perspectives. That's true. But the Quran doesn't tell us to dash our dignity through the window nor to leave our ability to reason at the door. Allah says, "Kul siru fil ardi fanzuru kayfa bada al khulq, thumma Allah yunshiu al nashat al akhira. Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir." Say to them, O Prophet, travel throughout the land and see how He originated the creation. Then Allah will bring into existence one more time. Surely Allah is most capable of everything. In another verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Afalam yasiru fil ardi fatakuna lahum kulubu yaqiluna biha, aw azan yasmauna biha, fa inna la ta'mal abasar, walakin ta'mal kulubu lati fi sudur." Have they not traveled through the earth and have hearts by which to reason and ears by which to hear? For indeed, it is not eyes that are blinded, but blinded are the hearts which are within the breast. First of all. In context of those verses we are not ordered to take pleasure in the fear of Allah's wrath in places that are downright jicks inhabited by devils or simply doomed rather we are to keep our hearts with all vigilance not to travel to even places that encourage switching off from being religious much more than switching on hasn't the Quran commanded us to flee from places where the laws of Allah are being mocked at 
Why would any Muslim in his righteous sense choose a place to holiday where shirk is openly observed and lewdness is in full blast? Women wearing next to nothing and bare-chested men in shirts kicking back with bears. It is the drunkenness and public display of promiscuity that will shock and disgruntle one's sanity like something straight out of hell. Knowing where we can go and should not go for vacation can be more subtle than we assume. And it often takes no more than common sense and decency to avoid inappropriate places. Yet, it is incredibly sad to see Muslims trying to roam the world with no limit while treating Hajj and Umrah with no importance whatsoever. Then when calamity strikes them, they finally realize the very world can't do a thing for them. By then, it is too late to realize no changing of place at a 460 miles an hour could make them happier or holier. The really precious thing in life is a righteous heart with insight, not pace and jet speed. Too much speed usually ends in a crash, leaving tourists either dead or in a situation begging for mercy after squandering their wealth, time and energy in places that are void of Allah's mercy and blessing. In more efforts to pour out more baseless justification, some avid travelers claim that it's not like they don't have Hajj in mind, just that they can't financially afford that more expensive journey and Hajj arrangements. Do people really believe that after affirming the intention of Hajj, it would then automatically appear before them? Don't they realize that the money they spend on every useless trip here, there and everywhere could be saved for their Hajj? In any event, saving has to start with something. Rome wasn't built in a day. When all those poor faithful believers declare their intention for Hajj, they didn't possess any sort of financial means. But because that intention and their striving came direct from the heart, Allah opened a way for them which they had never thought of. Those who were not granted the permission to undergo the physical journey still got their fair share of rewards for Hajj. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Summa yuba'asuna ala niyatihim. Everyone will be raised according to their intention. It is horribly painful that Muslims will travel to places just next door to Mecca for vacation. Places like Dubai, Turkey, Indonesia and so on and so forth. Yet a well-deserved and mandated holiday trip is what they never experience. The safest and most spiritually uplifting place in the wide world. If only they witness this for themselves, they will feel that real mix of spirituality and gorgeousness. Hajj and Umrah produce everlasting effects in the heart. For millions of Muslims every year, this blessed experience of the pilgrimage proves to be the most indelible part of their lives with layers upon layers of joy that stays with them forever. Those who are already taking the journey would have their mind going back to the greatness of the sacred places, the spiritual gains, the enjoyment in devotions, and all the beautiful memories of events conjured up in their head, bringing happiness to their hearts and genuinely longing with an incessant desire to visit again. They would immensely remember with a glow running across their face of how they simply choke on emotions upon experiencing the delight of setting eyes on the Kaaba for the first time. That joy is more than a moment. It is more than circumstances as happiness is dictated by divine purposes. During such sacred mental state adopted during that journey, anxiety feelings are stirred up and tears are shed enthusiastically. Everyone is gathered together as equals before their Lord. With all that has been said, have you not yet mentally started gearing towards this most divinely spectacular trip, a completely natural wonder? Or are you still inclined to your usual journeys that are morbidly riff with disaster, chaos, and even sinful activities? What should be foremost in your heart before thinking of any place to go is to make all preparation to undergo that cracking sacred journey to the center of the earth, not around the globe. Then you will tell the world with all wonder struck how unifying and captivating it is after you see it with your own two eyes. There is absolutely no other event or spiritual experience with specific features that can demonstrate or evoke images of beauty and serenity to such a limitless degree like this vacation. So go and witness real meaningful heritage sites, dynamic Islamic fraternity, celebration of morality and cleansing of sins.